this is going to be a disaster. Hey peeps, so welcome to Sparrow Springs. My name is Sarah. Today we are going to be doing a photo manipulation or a photo bash in Procreate. For those of you that don't know, I've been doing all of my digital artwork on my iPad. It's not an iPad Pro or anything which means that I have some limitations. About into a month of starting my channel, I made a video where I brought my husband on board in which I asked him this. Do you wish that I made more stuff for the house and what would you want? And this was his response. Be a ship or something, maybe a dragon. Get a castle, the dragon and the ship, and the ship can be on fire. People can be like running out, jumping in the water. Maybe sharks, ooh, and a lightning storm. Maybe different colors like purple lightning and green lightning to make it look crazy and maybe a tornado in the background. That would be awesome. I think you're overestimating my skill set. No. Now I may be in over my head a little bit, but let's see just what Procreate can handle. So I have gone ahead and I have sourced all my images from Unsplash. I'm not gonna lie, I was not expecting to find anything close to what I needed, but I found some fantastic options. Obviously, I had to be a little creative when it came to the dragon, so I had a lot of elements to incorporate, so I was a little nervous to see just how much I could put in. I'm working on my environment first. Basically, if I create my environment, it will be easier to place my subjects and adjust their colors accordingly. So I have this really cool tornado picture, and rather than just filling the background with the stock photo as is, I'm trying to think of where I want my focus to be. I know I need to get a castle and lightning in here, so, of this photo, the most interesting piece is the cloud funnel. So I'm gonna try placing it kind of to the left. So I have some lightning on either side, but it'll still give me the opportunity to have both green and purple lightning, but I'll still have room for my castle in it as well. So I know I need a body of water for my ship, but I also want something to be kind of interesting in the foreground or just that whole bottom section. It's gonna just feel empty in comparison to all the chaos that's going on in the middle ground. So I have these really cool rocks that I'm kind of placing right in the front. Now we plop in some lightning. <laughs> now you will notice I'm not actually cutting these out just because it's not going to give me the same effect because, you know, the lightning has that glow. And if I were to cut the background out, I'm going to lose all that natural glow. So all I want to do is erase enough of it so that I don't have the harsh, dark edges. And then I'm going to change the layer mode. And when I want to accent the light in a photo, I will usually use um, color dodge, screen, or overlay. It just kind of depends on which layer mode looks the best with that photo. I'm making some minor adjustments right now, but most of everything is just figuring out composition and the path of interest. So when I drop this next photo, I'm using both the lightning and the ocean, but I'm going to separate them because I want the ocean across the whole picture. But the lightning would have ended up right over my funnel cloud, which I don't want that. So this is what I love about photo manipulation, that once you understand the basics, that you can pretty much create anything that you want. You may notice that I don't have a super refined cut on most of my background elements. And that's because the believability of these pieces is very dependent on how they interact with their environment. There's no way that I can make water flowing around these rocks more believable than the water that's already there in the original picture. So I don't want to cut them out, I just want to blend them into the next environment piece. So blending doesn't always happen just with the texture of the photo, but it's more with the values and the colors. You'll see more as I start adjusting each photo with curves. Sometimes when I can't blend one element into another, then I'll add something in front of it almost to cover the seam. So when I added the castle, there was no way that I was going to be able to blend that road into the ocean. So I opted to put a rock in front of it that was already sitting in water. Once again, I had some issues with my iPad recording. So this next section is from the time lapse that Procreate automatically creates. So if you want to know more about how I use curves to adjust lighting, I will link a video in the description. So for now, just watch as each element is adjusted and watch the edges of the photos just disappear. Once I cut the rock out in front of the castle, I didn't do anything more. I didn't do any more erasing. 
So it was all just matching everything to the scene. And then I go back later and I will do some cleanup because after after the colors are all matched, then I know what I actually need to erase. Now sometimes things don't blend perfectly and that's when I come in with the digital painting techniques. I like this little piece of land in front of the lightning bolt, so I'm gonna just paint it right back in. I don't need to be super detailed because it is further in the background. Speaking of, I've got this insane environment, which on a normal day I would say that less is more, but we're heading into the thick of it. So let's make a mess. We are going to add several layers of images, so let's just start with our ship. <laughs> the cutting process was a little interesting. Basically, I just erased most of the ropes and then painted them back in, so I wasn't cutting around every single little rope. And then we go in and add a shadow so it actually looks like the ship belongs there. And this is the thing. If you're going to be putting all these different images together, you need to make the lighting consistent. Light will sell your image faster than any other aspect. Now things get really interesting. Let's start making the dragon. So obviously it's not like I'm going to find an actual photo of a dragon. Even if you were to find someone who created a stock photo, of a dragon, it's going to be kind of like fake rendering looking. So granted, some people like really do make a pretty convincing dragon, <laughs> but this is definitely more fun and cost effective. So thinking about characteristics that I want my dragon to have, uh, I wanted webbed wings, so I'm gonna use this picture of a bat. I don't really like the feet, but since it's going to be pretty small, I just kind of settled on this one. Then I wanted some scales and I wanted a longer neck, so we grab a stock photo of a snake. You can kind of see I cut everything out with an eraser tool so that I have complete control over the kind of edges that I have. This doesn't seem like it would be a faster option, but with some practice you can get pretty quick at it and there's no cleanup to do when it's done. I fidget with it quite a bit trying to balance the size of where the neck connects to the body, but I don't really want the head and neck to feel too big either. So now I'm just gonna warp it a little bit to make the neck fit a little better, making sure not to go too far. I don't want the top of the neck to look stretched, especially the way the neck is like twisting and bending. I just want the shape to flow into the bat's body. Now I'm gonna grab some more of that snake for some texture, um, just to keep things a bit more consistent, because kind of want scales on the whole thing. Now because I'm combining several images to create this one element, I have to adjust color and lighting in two steps really. First I have to match everything to the bat wing color because that's kind of the color I wanted to keep. I like that orange color. Then afterwards I will go and group all of those together and adjust the merged layer all as one to the background. But before I go and do that I wanted to give it kind of a different looking head because I want the dragon to be breathing fire so I bring in another image with this lizard with its mouth wide open and I also just liked this more sharp angled head. Okay so now we have this scene. Everything looks fairly consistent, but now we need to really push the lighting scenario. So let's bring in some green and purple lightning. We're getting back into where my recording wasn't working. So I can't tell you exactly what layer mode these were in, but I'm pretty sure it's either overlay or color. Pretty sure it's on the color mode. Now as I'm creating this dramatic lighting scene, I need to remember that my source of light is coming from these two bolts of lightning and they're different colors. So my different objects are going to have a different hue to the lighting depending on where the light is actually hitting the object. So the first object I will be touching on is the castle and since it's so far in the background and closer to the lightning bolt, I'm basically just putting a very bright purple rim light all around the edge and bringing some lines forward to create some shape. A lot of this detail is going to be missed, but I still kind of want to include it. Then I'm going to touch on the shark a little bit. He's pretty small, so he may not be very noticeable, but again, this lighting is just going to make him stand out a little bit from the background, and it might make somebody kind of do a little bit of a double take. <laughs> then we do a little bit just on the right side of the ship, and a few strokes on the dragon as well. We're going to add some lighting to our funnel cloud, and this is really going to make it pop. This was so easy though. Basically, I just paint 
some outlines with straight up color, no layer mode, no nothing. And then I used a textured brush to just kind of smudge it out into this kind of a cloudy look. Then I go back to the dragon and I paint some brighter green on just that one side of him. Pretty much at this point, I'm going just throughout the whole image and adding rim light. So we work on the ship a little bit, primarily on that left side. And then I come and I do the rocks in the foreground. Um, I'm making this rim light a little bit more subtle on the rocks just because they're so far forward and they're farther away from our light source. But the rocks were already kind of dark, so I didn't want them to just blend into the foreground too much either. At this point, I felt like the castle was just too much of a dark blob in the back. So I went back in and added some lights in the windows and gave it a little bit of a glow. So this is quickly turning into kind of a secondary colors scheme, which is not something that I would normally do, but I really like this one. And now we add some fire. I was a bit lazy and I didn't want to try and find several different fire images. So I just took this one image and duplicated it and then I flipped it horizontally and I sized it up and warped it a little bit just to give it some variety. For the fire that the dragon was actually breathing, I decided to just paint this in myself. Now it took a little bit of experimenting, but I ended up just using one of the default Procreate brushes that you use to create smoke. And it was a cool effect, but it did take a little bit of adjusting. After that, I went through with some reddish orange on a color dodge mode. Shockingly enough, despite having more images than I usually do, I didn't even come close to reaching my limit of layers. Part of that is just, I think, working with Procreate more, and I have learned to consolidate things earlier and use one layer to accomplish multiple things. Now in Photoshop, I didn't have that limitation, so I never really hesitated to just add a new layer, even if I didn't really need it. So I would end up with 75 to 100 different layers, and trying to comb through all of them just to fix one thing was such a pain. <laughs> Then we make some final adjustments to the flattened image, and here is the final result. It's a bit crazy, but I love how this turned out and so did my husband, which it is now the background of his phone. I hope you all enjoyed this. Check out my latest poll on the community tab of my channel to vote on what you'd like to see next. Speaking of which, we need to talk for a moment, okay? You see this? This? I asked you guys what kind of traditional medium that you wanted to see, and I got this, a three-way tie. You can't tell me that someone didn't come along and be like, huh, Oh look, a three-way tie. I'll just, you know, add one extra vote. No, that's not what you guys did. So I guess it's my turn to decide what we're doing in the next video. And I've decided we're painting a ukulele. If you don't like it, you should have voted. Okay, I'm just kidding, peeps, but this next video is going to be a lot of fun, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. Seriously. That's all for now, peeps, and I will see you in the next video.